Well, it's no wonder San Francisco newspapers sometimes referred to San Luis Obispo and northern Santa Barbara counties as the Gap. And it's no wonder the few settlers occupying these lands doubted that the territory would ever attract large numbers of people. Back then, it took a really seasoned and determined traveler to reach this area by either stagecoach or sea, even during the last quarter of the 19th century. Settlers in northern San Luis Obispo County were almost cut off from the southern part, the only connection being a precariously steep, curving, and deeply rutted wagon trail that wound its way through La Cuesta Pass in the Santa Lucias, nearly impossible in bad weather and downright dangerous at all times. San Marcos Pass created a similar problem for Santa Barbara County. Even the proximity of both counties to the sea was little help before 1870. Back then, there were no wharves ready for the transfer of goods and passengers. Any hopes that were raised by the 1869 completion of the Transcontinental Railroad were quickly dashed when the Southern Pacific Railroad Company began connecting San Francisco to Los Angeles through the inland valley rather than along the coast. Naturally, the people of this coastal territory would come to see John Hartford in somewhat heroic proportions. He was the man who opened the world for them. In early August of 1874, Harford's inventiveness and dogged efforts were to alter economic conditions in these counties for years to come. Now, even as the regionally located Pacific Coast Railroad Company extended the narrow gauge track between Port Harford and Los Olivos, the local power brokers who made it possible knew that the Central Coast would never realize its potential without a railroad going through the county and connecting with both San Francisco and Los Angeles. Chauncey Hatch Phillips tall, lean, and commanding appearance served as a magnet in building their team. He had helped establish San Luis Obispo's first bank, and he led the way as principal broker in selling stock to capitalize the local railroad. In partnership with the Pacific Steamship Company, Phillips formed the West Coast Land Company. Now, like many young men, William Paulson was captivated with the accomplishments of the Wright brothers and Glenn Curtis, a mechanic by trade. Paulson built an airplane in his spare time behind his auto repair shop. Now, although his airplane never flew, his engine was used for the Patterson's Harvester, the first gasoline-powered device of its kind on the Central Coast. For Harriet Quimby, not even the sky was the limit as the first woman in America to earn an airplane pilot's license and the first woman to fly solo over the English Channel. She soared above land and sea at a time when the number of pilots alive was barely more than the number who had crashed and died. She stepped from a 19th century bucolic upbringing on the central coast of California into the 20th century embracing machine age thrills and freedoms imaginable just a few years earlier. She was Arroyo Grande's first lady of the air.